Um, what does it mean that we were dead in our trespasses and sins? We were dead in our sins, or we are. The Bible says that we are dead in our sins. In the book of Ephesians, and you ha and you have he quickened. You has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. You are dead in your sins and trespasses. What does this mean? Now, we have to understand that um, in the letter to the Ephesians, uh, or to the Ephesian church, Paul writes of the great gift that God has given them through his son. Remember in 2 Corinthians 9.15. And because of Jesus, they are not merely bad people made good, but they are dead people made alive. Dead people made alive. When Adam and Eve sinned in the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3, they brought both physical and spiritual death into God's perfect world. When they sinned, they brought that. We can confirm this in the book of Romans 5.12. Romans 5.12. It says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So death passed upon all men. It came from Adam all the way to all men. For that all have sinned. All have sinned. Hmm. Adam and Eve combined. These two people, they brought sin to the world. And uh, what does the Bible say about sin? Romans 6, 23. Well, if we have sin, then what's wrong with that? The Bible says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So the wages of sin is death. If Adam and Eve, they gave us uh, sin, we are supposed to die. So this is both physical and spiritual death. And the moment they transgressed God's law, their eyes were opened. Remember? Their eyes were opened. And they now could be able to know uh, good or evil, that they were naked. They never knew that they were naked before. Why? Because uh, God had, uh, was, was, was uh, covering them. They didn't know. It's just like a baby. A baby sometimes... Uh, he or she doesn't know if uh, uh, they are naked or not. They don't feel all those kind of... Even if you dress a, a, a baby in front of people, they don't realize because it doesn't matter. See, and the, and the eyes of them both were opened and they knew knowledge, knowledge. They knew that they were naked and they sewed figs leaves together and made themselves aprons. You see? So they knew, they understood, oops, guys, we're naked. You see, the law, the moment the law came, they died. The Bible says, I, I was alive before the law. And when the law came, I died. When they realized what is good and what is evil, immediately they died. Okay? We have to understand that for the first time, mankind tested rebellion and was awakened to the difference between good and evil. And uh, they had experienced no evil back then, no shame, no guilt until that moment. But with one forbidden bite, just one bite, one forbidden bite, their souls and their bodies began to die. And God himself made the sacrifice required to atone for that sin. Do you know God himself is the one who atoned for the first sin? Genesis 3, 21. 
he gave that atonement for their sin in the in the first uh, place but of course it was not god himself atoning but he 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 presented a formula of how they could atone for that sin remember unto adam also and to his wife did the lord make coats of skins coats of skins and clothed them so what was he clothing their sin and how did he clothe that sin by skins made by you know coats of animals so it means an animal shed blood because of them there was blood which was shed for the sake of these two adam and eve at least to cover their sin but of course we know the bible tells us that the blood of goats and animals and and all that cannot save cannot take away sin only jesus christ so this was an example of what would happen in the days ahead until christ comes you see how bad sin can be so god uh, did that and he established the principle that only through the death of a perfect substitute could the sinner live this one it began the unfolding of god's ultimate redemption ultimate redemption uh, which you call the plan of salvation by which christ would make that ultimate sacrifice to atone for the sins of everyone in the world as the bible says in first john uh, 2 verses 2 jesus he became that atonement and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for the sins of the whole world jesus is the propitiation for the sins of the whole world okay and also john 3 john 3 16 the most famous verse oops uh i've done my own things john 3 uh verse 16 this is the most famous verse i think even uh everyone out there knows this verse for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in that atonement that jesus god gave who is jesus the son of god in him should not perish but have everlasting life are you seeing the point God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever will believe will believe because Jesus was given as an atonement he was the, that lamb which was to be slain now remember back then I told you we just show you I, I showed you a verse in Genesis 3 21 where God uh, clothed them with the with, with the skins from animals he shed the blood of an animal and remember when john the baptist saw jesus coming to be uh, baptized what did he say he said behold the lamb of god who takes away the sin of the world so jesus was coming as a lamb to be atoned for our sins so that whosoever will believe will not perish but will have everlasting life for god does not send his son unto the world to condemn the world you see condemnation is of the devil god did not send jesus to come and tell you hey you you're a sinner you you're a liar you you have lied you you have done this no he did not send jesus for that work but that the world through him might be saved there are so many people who say oh jesus came so that he can tell us what to do he's giving us instructions like who is giving us instructions don't do this don't do that no jesus did not come to do that he came so that you might be saved he that believeth on him is not condemned my friends you can't be condemned if you believe in jesus you can't even if you do something wrong just tell him oh sorry just like the way you tell your dad because now you're a child do you go and tell your father when uh, maybe you poured some milk on the table or on the seats and you tell oh dad please become my father again no you just tell him sorry dad i poured some milk on the seats but i'll wipe it and you move on because now when you're in christ you're not condemned you're a child of god but he that believeth not is condemned already if you don't believe in him you're condemned because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of god are you seeing the point so it's really really important 
Because right now we know what is good and evil. Remember, the law came to bring us the knowledge of what is good and what is evil. And uh, before we surrender to the Holy Spirit urging, our spirits are dead to the things of God. We are already dead. We don't feel anything. Look at someone out there who doesn't know the truth of God. He doesn't care. He goes out doing every evil thing. He doesn't care because he's dead. According to God, he's already condemned. Okay? They are dead. And the Bible tells us those, those kind of people, they don't know anything. And they are already their fate is sealed unless they believe. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. There are so many people who are trying to please God in their works. They try to be good people. They try to do this and this and this. Uh, you know, I go to church. I, I give offering and tithes. I do this. I'm not saved, but uh, I'm a good person. I think uh, God will allow me to heaven. No, he won't. Why? Because unless you have Christ, you believe on the one that God sent, you can never be alive. You're as dead as the bones. You're as dead as this bone. You know, we have no good within ourselves and we have no desire to submit to our creator. When we are still dead, we have no desire. We don't even understand the Bible. I remember back in the days I could read the Bible, but it was just flat dead words. I was wondering, what, what do people really enjoy in this Bible? I don't see anything because I was dead. But the moment I came alive, the word of God was like, it was like shining crystals and I, and I could enjoy the Bible, reading the Bible. Even to date, my, my, my Bible is, is, is a, what can I say, tattered and things like that. Because you read it so much until you have to buy two Bibles an extra because you have to read so much. It's so en en encouraging and enticing to read. But when you're dead, do, does a dead man enjoy anything? No. When we are spiritually dead, when we are dead spiritually or we are spiritually dead, we have no way to make ourselves alive. Just as a corpse cannot do anything to, to, to help himself, so we cannot save ourselves or make uh, a move to cleanse our sins. For those who say, oh, I'm doing some good things uh, so that I can please go to get to heaven. Now, how can you do those things and you're dead? <laughs> Come on, it can't work. Even if you put a, a mobile phone, a smartphone in, in a corpse of a dead man, do you think he's going to tweet? Nothing. He can do nothing. He's dead. We cannot even produce the desire to obey God when we are dead. Dead people need a life giver. Dead people need a life giver. Okay? In the book of John 1 verses 4, it speaks about this life giver this life giver in him was life and the life was the light of man jesus had life so this life of jesus is the one that you're walking with and the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not jesus was walking and he was the light but because people were full of darkness they did not even understand they didn't understand this was the son of god Look at the Pharisees. They walked with Jesus every day. They read the books, the law, books of the law. But because they were total in darkness, they could not understand that this is the Jesus they have been reading through all in the Bible, all through. They basically killed their Messiah because darkness cannot comprehend light. Okay? You have to understand that, uh, that uh, the life jesus gave or the life that jesus gives is not merely eternal life in heaven is not only eternal life in heaven but uh, it is a spiritual life on earth that empowers us to live out the purpose for which he created us the book of john 3 36 tells us john 3 uh, 36 tells us a bit about this a life that Jesus gives us. He that believeth on the Son has everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So in heaven there is no wrath. 
So here we're not talking about only the heaven life, but you're also talking about life here on earth. Okay? So, the wrath of God will abide on you if you don't believe. But if you believe, you will go to heaven and uh, you, you will not be appointed to wrath. Are, are you seeing the point? And also the book of Titus uh, 3 verse uh, 7 also tells us about the same. It tells us that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life being justified by his grace for by grace are you saved saved by grace justification is just if 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 you if you take just just if i'd not sinned being justified i i just take it as, as if you're saying just is as if you're going back to factory settings just as if okay just if i had not sinned if as if i had not sinned that's what I, how I simplify the word justified, okay? So you are justified and made clean and new as if you never sinned by the grace of God, only through faith that you get that eternal life. Are you seeing the point here? Our dead spirits can be, uh, we have to understand that our dead spirits can be compared to a deflated balloon inside our souls. We are scarcely aware of his presence as we live for ourselves under the command of sin look at second peter second peter uh, 2 19 it says while they promise them liberty they themselves are the servants of corruption for of whom a man is overcome of the same he's brought in bondage. You see, most people in the world, they promise others liberty. Many religions, they promise you liberty. They tell you, if you do this, if you do that, if you do that, you will have liberty, you will go to heaven, you will be good, and God will be happy with you. But they themselves, they are servants of corruption because they are lost, and they are believing, they are putting their trust in something else instead of Jesus Christ. Are you seeing the point here? And also in the book of Romans uh, 6, verse 16, it also tells us about the same. It says, Know ye not that to whom you yield your servants to obey, his servants you, you are to whom you obey, whether to sin, of sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness? So those people tell you, oh, let's do this and this and this and this, and then we'll, we'll, uh, we'll be good to ourselves then they are obeying sin unto death. Because the only way whosoever, who gives life is Jesus Christ. So if you obey Christ, what's going to happen? You're going to get righteousness. But if you obey doing your own things and you say, I'm a good person, uh, yeah, I'll handle it. Then my friends, you're heading to death. But only if you obey Jesus, you'll be able to get righteousness. Because uh, one thing which we have to get very clear is when we, when we respond to the Holy Spirit's calling, as written in the book of uh, uh, John 6.44, we repent of our sins and exercise faith in the Lord Jesus. We exercise our faith in the Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians 12 verses 3. And God forgives our sins, crediting us with the righteousness of Jesus. We have Christ's righteousness. This one I have to read. Second uh, Corinthians uh, 5, verse 21. See. It says, For he has made him to be seen for us. So Christ, when he was at the cross, he was seen for us. He took our curses, he took our, our sins, he took everything. He was like, he's the one who was there in a point that uh, it, it's just, it's it's you who are supposed to be there. But he said, okay, no, 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 don't go to the cross. Let me go there for you. Let me take your sin. Let me take your death. Who knew no sin? Jesus knew no sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 
If you believe that Jesus was there on your behalf, he supplemented you. He was the substitutionary atonement for your sins. Then, my friends, you're saved. Okay? And uh, when you understand that, 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 that's where salvation is. Salvation is found in Jesus. It's not found in things that you do. It's not found in, I go to church, I give tithes, I help the poor, I am a good person, I do this and this, I say this prayer, I do that. No, it is all about believing that Jesus was there for you. He was at that cross in replacement for you. I, I, are you seeing the point here? And also that Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to live inside us. The Greek word for spirit is a pneuma, P-N-E-U-M-A, pneuma, which means breath or wind. At the moment of conversion, it is very good to understand that the breath of God fills that deflated balloon. And our dead spirits come alive. This is the new spiritual life which goes to work, transforming us from a lifeless, sinful corpse or corpses to vibrant, living children of God. We become living children of God through Christ. Are you seeing the point here? Are you seeing the point here? Uh, oops, I've lost my, my blue letter Bible here. Okay, so the Bible explains that to us. And uh, let's see Ephesians, Ephesians uh, 2, uh, verse 5. It tells us, even when we are dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved. When you are dead in sins, who quickened us? Jesus. He quickened us together with Christ. So that by grace, we are saved. Okay? And also in the book of John, John 1 verse 12, it tells us, it tells us, But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe, believe again, believe on his name. If you believe on his name, you believe in Jesus then you become child of God, okay? Look, which were born, not of blood, not the will of the flesh, not the will of man, but of God. The moment you believe in Jesus, you are born of God. And once you are born, can you be unborn? No, you can't be unborn. That's why you can't lose salvation, okay? For those who fear and they say, oh, we can lose salvation. No, you can lose salvation, Okay? Every human being in the world exists in one of these two categories. You are either spiritually dead or spiritually alive. And religion cannot make a dead man live. Good works, efforts, traditions, all those may look like a life to other dead people, but they have no spiritual power to transform from the inside out. Jesus Christ paid the highest price to redeem us from the clutches of Satan. And sin destroys. Sin does destroy. Surrender your life to Jesus Christ. Because we are all dead in our trespasses. We are all dead in our trespasses and our sins. But we can be made alive through the blood of Jesus Christ. Only Jesus can make us alive. We are all dead in our trespasses until that day when we believe in Jesus Christ and he gives us life. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? If you don't believe in Jesus, please, I want to tell you how you can do it. You only believe through the gospel. What is the gospel? The word gospel means good news. Good news about what? First, let's see. Do we have bad news? Yes. Every man sinned. Every person sinned. The Bible says we are all sinners. No one is righteous. No, not one. And the wages of sin is death. That is bad news. Because we are sinners, we are supposed to die. But what's the good news? Good news is that there is someone 2,000 years ago who died for us. While we were still sinners, 
Christ died for us. He substituted himself for us. He took our death so that we can have his life. Are you seeing the point here? So the gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. And it says that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Why? Why did he die? For you. And how did he die? He died by shedding his blood. Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. And the book of Leviticus 17.11 says, The life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given you the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that atones for the soul. So unless the blood is there, there can never be uh, forgiveness of sins. Remember, back in the Old Testament, they used to uh, 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 kill animals, uh, lambs and things like that to, to, to try and cover their sins. But those things, they could not take away the, the sin. They were only covering the sin for a period of time. You, 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 when you sin again, you go back again. You sin again, you go back again. But when Jesus came, Jesus came, he took away the sin. Remember when John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to be baptized, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. He took away. Right now, in Christ Jesus, there is no condemnation. You just have to believe that fact and confess it to Christ what you have believed. You only confess what you know because if you confess what you don't know, then you are a liar. That's why the sinner's prayer does not save. Because sinner's prayer is just a couple of people confessing things which they don't know. We have to understand the fact that Jesus died for our sins. All you need to do is confess and tell Jesus, Jesus, I believe that now, 100%, I believe that 2,000 years ago that you died for my sins, you were buried and rose again. The third day is written in the scripture. I believe you and I receive this atonement, this payment of sin by faith. Be my Lord and Savior. My friends, when you do that, you're saved, sealed, and sanctified unto the day of redemption. Okay? So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And also you can uh, uh, share to people. Let them also hear. And also you can subscribe to watch more videos which you post every day. And uh, likewise, also you can check in our description box. We have a couple of other channels that uh, we also use them to preach just go there and check them just click those links and also see what we have and share to your friends also god bless you and have a good time